What's up, man? How you doing? I am doing great. We, uh, we were just talking offline a little bit there. We got a new dog. So running with the uh, kind of puppy energy, the highs and lows. The, what, the uh, joke mm-hmm. around the house is that he's like a little cloud with fangs. He's uh, a fluffy, quite, and tell everybody fluffy what, little type, guy. what type of dog, what's the name? I think he's uh, mostly Great Pyrenees. So he's going to be a big boy. He's already pretty big. Um, yeah. So. And he's hanging out next to you right now in case somebody hears something. Yeah, exactly. He's chilling right now. And he oscillates between like basically dead and everything is my chew toy. So yeah, <laughs> we'll see it. how we it's do here. <laughs> the puppy stage for you, grown and just exhausted all the time. <laughs> yeah. Did yep. you get any, uh, what, what was your most recent fitness? Most recent fitness yesterday was some rowing intervals. I've been programming the main site for the past little bit. <sighs> rowing so I gotta intervals, take, okay. Got to take my own medicine. That was uh, what 1K, distance? 1K, 750, 500, 250. Three mm-hmm. minutes rest in between each one. Mm-hmm. Giddy up. And I'll tell you, the 750 was the worst distance because I felt good after the 1K, did the 1K, did better than I had, had hoped. I like felt better about it than, uh, you know, I, I should have mm-hmm. kind of bolstered my confidence a little bit. And I came <laughs> out a little hot on the 750 in the last like 300 meters. I was like, oh man, it's a huge mistake. I'm just trying to hang on. And so, one of those distances that, that doesn't get hit that frequently. And so maybe yeah. not for you, but there's a lot of people that maybe not be exactly sure how to pace it because it is kind yeah. of one of those in-between deals. And it can also be the same with the 250, right? You won't see mm-hmm. something sub 500 that frequently on the rower. So that's cool. I pulled some deads yesterday, some sets of four. And it was one of those days where like the human body is an interesting thing because this week's been a bit of a kick in the teeth and mm. sleep's been bad. Kids have had stuff going on, so I've been up dealing with them. It's just, you know, been not not feeling good. It was day three, walked into the gym, warm-up didn't feel good. The weights kept going up, kept feeling good. Pulled 365 hey. for a four, is happy with that, you know. And Take it when just, you can get it. You, it's just one of those yep. days. You, sometimes you just, all signs pointed to not a good day in the gym, and then just played it by ear. So there is something to hold, you know, listening to your body. But, well, yeah. That was actually not not a by, by design warm, but this whole listening to your body is, is the point of today's show. So this is a great question from an individual by the name of Marcus. And Marcus says, zero to 60 with no warm up, <laughs> <laughs> which is a great intro. Crossfitters say that we prepare for the unknown, that we train for a certain way to prepare ourselves for whatever might come. I'm a full time firefighter and we never know what our next call is going to be or when it will be. That means we can go straight from bed to heavy lifting or straight from bed to a high heart rate, et cetera, et cetera, with no warm up. So my question is, as long as I do my regular warm ups in training and I train smart, I scale if I need to, I stretch, should this be enough to physically prepare my body for that call in the middle of the night? I think there's two short answers to this. The first short answer is yes, (laughs) I believe it will. Um, The second maybe moderate, less short answer is, well, what have you experienced? And again, I think so much of, of uh, what's valid in fitness can be answered through the lens of the individual that's doing it. And especially if you've been participating in it in a while, like answer it for yourself. Do you feel prepared based on the training that you're doing when that call comes? Because inevitably or invariably, you probably have been in that situation. And so what was your answer? Mm-hmm. But without putting it back on the individual, I do think that yes, absolutely. If you're training regularly and you're spending the time to warm up and you're doing the things that you're supposed to, um, that the, I, let's say, less frequent interval that you're going to be called to go from zero to 60, as he's saying, um, you will be fine because you are prepared. That's the whole point. It, it's you know, I think people have this mistaken idea about specificity that the only way the human body will know how to respond is if you are exactly replicating the demands that you may face. And that's not true. The mm-hmm. whole point of a general physical preparation program is that there's a ton of overlap and that you don't have to train every single contingency. You have to train general qualities well enough so that when you need them, you can call upon them. And I think that kind of state of ready, readiness is is no different. You know, this is often, you'll often hear this phrase every now and then is like, you know, cheetah doesn't warm up, you know, so, you know, <laughs> why should I warm up? Which the answer for oh, most people is, you're not a cheetah. 
<laughs> second favorite animal analogy to well the gorilla only eats shoots and leaves and he's you know monstrously strong you're like yeah he has an entirely different nervous system and digestive system and is you know more suited to that environment and that condition than than the human animal so it's mm -hmm. only yeah <laughs> but so, what i will say in that is um is that i think best training practice and what you can do when called upon to do it are different things. So for example, um, best training practice, especially if you've got more miles on your body, so to speak, mm -hmm. is to take some time making sure that you are in the groove, making sure that things are moving the way they're supposed to, making sure that the tissue that you're about to subject to some intense activity is pliable and warm and the blood is pumping. Those are all physiological realities <clears throat> that, again, if you've got more miles on your body, whether through age or uh, abuse, <laughs> it might take a little longer for those physiological um, responses to kick in. Now, that being said, when that rare, more rare occasion uh, comes to pass that you have to jump into gear faster, it's not to say that you can't do it. It's just that it may not be the best way to train on a regular basis. And so there's two different things in the same sense that, I mean, you talk about this all the time, you just did. Hey, you know, you got limited time, it's deadlift day. Um, sometimes you don't get the luxury of doing the ramp up sets that you would like, and you have to kind of dive right into mm -hmm. the fire. Is that optimal? Probably not. But if you're well conditioned and trained enough, can you do it on occasion and still get close to what you would have otherwise? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And if you're talking about, you know, with, with Marcus's example, which is a fantastic real life example from somebody unlike most of us, who's actually out yeah. there using his fitness for his occupation, like, first of all, God bless you, it's, you know, live in it. Yeah. Second of all, there is no ideal training protocol that guarantees you're bulletproof. You know, it's just it's mm -hmm. just one of those deals. So in my opinion, the best thing that you can do is is based upon the evidence that's been presented to you or by trainers and coaches that you know and trust is what has the greatest chance of setting you up for success for the unknown unknowable. And in my mind, it's going to be accumulating as many smart training days in the gym as possible. That's yep, the single easiest way I can say it. And, and a smart training day is exactly like Marcus said, like, hey, when I can, I do a good warm up, I scale if I have to pay attention to my body. I, you know, stretch afterwards, like if that's your most of the time scenario, and you're resting and eating well, I don't think you can prepare yourself better for the unknown than doing that. Now, that's not to say that if you've got, I mean, a full blown, if we're talking a, a real life 100% effort, 100 meter dash out of a stone cold <laughs> sleep, it's tough for me to think of something which has a greater chance of grenading your hamstring than that. Okay, so I mean, that's, that's just the nature of the beast. But what I will say is, getting back to that earlier point, I think the greatest opportunity is you keep placing those good bricks in the wall, good bricks mm -hmm. in the wall, trying to make that wall as solid as you possibly can. Because the way I think about it is, you know, let's say that you are this firefighter and you have to um, surmount a wall or a chain link fence or whatever, and you've got to do it stone cold. Well, if you and your compatriots are running towards this fence, for example, and you on a normal day have 20 dead, dead hang pull-ups and your compatriots have zero, I have a much greater thought that you are now operating at a fraction of the capacity that you have, you know, put in the bank, so to speak. And whereas these people next to you who don't train regularly like you do, it's going to be a lot more taxing on their musculature, no their tendons, their no ligaments, question. all of that stuff. So you are, you're doing yourself a favor with all these training days. And the same could be said for you've got to put it in gear and hightail it from point A to point B. And you're, you know, you can normally do a 200 meter run on your eight by 200 meter days because you're a good person. You don't blow those off. So you do those days. And then when you do those days, you're running them around 40 seconds, you know, you've got a good top end speed and you've got to get somewhere and your, your fellow, you know, officers don't do that sort of a training. I think your body's going to have just a better chance. I'm not saying you won't strain your hamstring if you're totally stone cold, but I think you're setting yourself up if you're operating at a fraction of or a lower percentage that's not near as maximal 
as people who aren't exposing themselves to functional movements and exposing themselves to intensity on a regular basis. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think I think yes it goes without saying you're going to be way ahead of the game if you're if you're doing it regularly. And a couple of things that kind of came up for me as you're talking through that is, um, you know, number one, this idea of bricks in the wall and good training days that stack up on one another. Uh, one of the things I think, particularly if you're actually going to be called on your fitness in a time of need for your occupation or for your safety is leaving a little bit in the tank at the end of the session. Uh, and that doesn't mean that the session is easy. That doesn't mean that you don't push your boundaries. But what it does mean is that you finish the session and you feel refreshed might not be the right word, but it's closer to what you should be feeling than absolutely just hammered. Mm. Um, because <laughs> you know yes. everybody at a certain point gets fit enough and mentally tough enough that they can really push themselves to a place that is now harder to recover from. And the benefit of that may not be as significant as you think. And in my experience, and, and most normal people that are not you know, training to compete with their fitness alone, uh, it's more beneficial to leave the session feeling like, man, that was hard, but like I feel good afterwards. I feel ready for the next one, so, mm -hmm. uh, generally. And that I'll give you a perfect example, that rowing interval workout that I was talking about at the beginning of this, this uh, chat. You know, it's four intervals. The total volume is not insane. It was a 2.5K total rowing volume. That's not much. Mm -hmm. Would it have been entirely possible for me to, you know, ramp back up the pyramid and do that in reverse after coming down from 1,000, 750, 500, 250? Of course. I don't think the training benefit would have been much greater. I just would have been more tired at the mm -hmm. end. And there's a big difference there. Um, as it was, I left that session feeling like, okay, that was definitely work. And like, I, right. I, I got enough. But I also felt like, you know what? I'm ready to face the rest of my day. I got up and did that first thing in the morning. And uh, you know, I wasn't just like toast for the rest of the day. And I truly believe that's part of a smart approach to training, particularly when you're relying on that training to serve you in some way outside the gym. And there might be, if you're familiar with yourself and you've been around strength and conditioning for a bit and you kind of, you can see the dumpster fire coming, you know, it might, <laughs> it, it might be good to pick and choose those on certain days. For example, yeah. you know, I'm just thinking out loud here of, you know, some of the days when some of my workouts could be categorized as attempted suicide. We're like, <laughs> if I was a, a fireman, let's say I was on for two days, off for two days, whatever the schedule happens to be. Sorry, firefighters. I'm not, I'm not familiar with that. But and let's say that I had Fran on the docket. You know, back in the day, like when I would get, I would, I would try to murder myself on Fran. And, you know, and I would, I'm one of those people, some people don't puke in workouts, but Fran would always make me puke. And I would do Fran and then it would catch up with me. And I would crawl outside of my hands and knees, this is not exaggeration, and, and vomit on the ground. And then I would lay there incapacitated for potentially 15 minutes. I was an utterly useless human being. And then I could mm -hmm. stand and like stumble <laughs> inside and like sit down in a box and be like, I don't want to see that again for a year. If I did that, because I was going to try to work out during my lunch break at the firehouse, and then the alarm went off, like as I finished pull up number nine, <laughs> the yeah. alarm went off. I would be a liability, not an asset to everybody around me. So I guess if I was yep. assessing my week's training and I'm like, ooh, here's what I got. I got a heavy day on this one. This is a bit of a longer time domain. Okay, so by its very nature, it's going to be a bit lower intensity. This is this. Ooh, this is a burner. Like I could send it in this and put myself into a hole. Okay, there's benefit and value to that, which is why we do short, sharp training intervals. But if you mm -hmm. have an occupation such as this, that might be something to consider when are you going to go ahead and, and plug that one into your week and you may want to modify things a bit. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, the other thing that I wanted to bring up around this topic is just this idea that, you know, the more in motion that you are, the more likely it is that you'll get back to that kind of optimal feeling of being warmed up more quickly. Mm -hmm. If you're following along what we just said and not just wrecking yourself day after day after day. But if you're doing a reasonably, uh, a reasonably structured training program with a reasonable volume and a reasonable intensity, um, you know, that regularity is going to beget itself. And so one of the analogies I think about is like, hey, you know, the longer the interval between the engine being running and not, 
the more it's going to take to heat that engine back up. And it's very true for the individual. The, the, I can say this anecdotally, and I can also say with people that I've trained over the years, that if you get in the habit where every day you're doing a little bit to um, kind of bolster your range of motion, you're doing these basic uh, kind of maintenance things as part of a normal warm-up routine, um, you're not overtraining and, and just thrashing yourself, it doesn't take much to get you back into that state where you're feeling, okay, I'm pretty loose and, and ready to go when you've structured it correctly. And it's when you take time away from that that you're going to notice, you're like, oh man, it took an extra long time today to get back to that kind of normal feeling of I'm ready to hit it. Mm -hmm. So that interval, I think, is really important. Um, and so one of the tricks that I've found, if you want to call it that over the years, uh, and I think we've talked about this in, in various uh, other topics, um, is to keep that consistency every day. Like try to do some basic movement every day that's not necessarily a workout. So even if it is your rest day, maybe you come in and you just go through some full range of motion with a PVC, or you do some basic stretching and like full body kind of mobility work, if right. you want to call it that way. Um, and it, it doesn't need to be a 90 minute session. It could be 10 minutes right out of bed. Uh, and the more you're in that habit of doing that as close to daily as you can, the faster you're going to find you ramp up to that I feel ready to go state. Movement is medicine, man. And I think that's mm. even more so as you enter each new decade of your life, you know, I mean, just whether it's passing below parallel, keeping the shoulders loose. Again, it doesn't have to be a workout. It's just yeah. greasing the groove. And there's a whole, a whole lot of benefit to that. Um, yep. Yeah, I think that's actually all I've got from Marcus, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, you got something yeah, else I think rolling that was around? Too. No, i just looking at my list here. I, I wrote it over on my whiteboard. And um, yeah, the big ones for me is like, yes, I think you will be more prepared. <laughs> that was the first. I just got yes with a big exclamation point. Um, the concept of, yes, some movement every day to keep the engine running, so to speak. Uh, and like, hey, if you do have a ton of miles on the body, it's going to take a little longer to, to get to that state. Um, and then, you know, maybe I, I do kind of want to reemphasize this idea that, uh, you know, just hitting something a hundred percent is possible, uh, without a warm up if you are conditioned generally. And if you are, um, you know, doing the things that you should not to say it's an optimal way to train and not to say it's something that you should seek out necessarily, mm -hmm. Um, but you should have the confidence that like, yeah, my body can take it if I have to do it. Yep. Uh, and then the last thing I'd mentioned there too, just uh, off the cuff, um, I, I can't remember the episode number. I should have looked it up, but I didn't. Uh, we interviewed Joe Maisley way back in the day. Oh, right. Yeah, that was a and, bit ago. Yeah. And uh, Joe is a firefighter in the Boston area. He uh, He's very dedicated to uh, fitness for firefighters. Um, so he's a great resource. You can go back and listen to that episode and seek him out on you know instagram or, or wherever um because he's a great resource and he's a guy that's that's doing it he is doing crossfit workouts at the firehouse you know and still ready to go yeah and uh just shout out in general and much love and appreciation to firefighters first responder police military mm -hmm. i mean out there in the front lines actually using your fitness appreciate that and i know that we've got some uh supporters out at NYPD fire as well. So oh, that's right. Right. yeah, you <laughs> yeah give, have to give a shout out and keep that police and fire uh, rivalry oh, yeah. <laughs> going back and forth. <laughs> but great, great question, Marcus. Much appreciated. Please keep them coming, everybody. Go to verynotrandom.com. Check out all the different cycles that we offer to help get your first pull up, handstand walk. There's some barbell cycling. There's some cool on ramp programs if you're looking to get back into fitness for. There's one for dumbbell. There's one for body weight. We've created one for barbell, but I don't think it's quite uploaded yet. I think we're still working in the ebook. So that hopefully will be there soon. And you know, we recently had Hinshaw on. We've got the 1.5 mile run, which mm -hmm. has been real popular. So check those out. Keep the questions coming on. And if you've got thoughts about what we spoke about today, and I almost oh I can't help it. I have to call this episode a cheat. It doesn't warm up. Why should I? I think we're gonna have to call it that. <laughs> just 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 clickbait title. It's just it's begging for it. It's gotta be. So, <laughs> so, so post your thoughts down there in the comments, and we always appreciate it. For Adrian Bosman, I'm Pat Sherwood, and we'll see you next time.